Salawat Allah Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am the dust beneath the dust of your land. I am invisible to you. I reach in my hand. You are the sun behind the clouds. So far you are near. Even if I don't see you, I know you are there. I am drowning near the air. You my comfort in my fear. And I wrote your holy name on every tear. I am at your door. I am at your door. And I am knocking, pleading, let me in to your remorse. If you turn away from me, I will lose my only hope. My only hope. Heart, I will shackle you in chains. If you forget Hussein's name, I will sever from you veins. I, I will deny you like tears. If you cannot shed a tear, seeing the head on a spare chest, I dare you if you would dare. Call out to me when I'm scared. I will deny. is under his dome. Beautiful Arbaeen, I am on. Lend me your holy hand moments. Take me to your land moments. Allow me to breathe moments. Hussein, Hussein. I am here to see the moon in all its glory. I am here again to listen to your story. I am here to close my eyes and drift away. In a far of memory of that tragic day. They say death surrounded you. So I came running to you. To be with the millions of lovers who came. They call your name. They call your name. Everywhere I look, I hear the people crying, Hussein. With the hand on the heart and one hand is wiping the pain. Crying, Hussein. Salawat Allahumma. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another talk in this Muharram series. So today we will be looking at a few lessons that we have learned from Karbala. But we listen to a lot of majlises and lectures in the month of Muharram because we love Imam Hussain and we want to remember the sad things that happened with him. But also when we look at the events of Karbala, we see that there are so many lessons that we can learn from. But everything that happened in Karbala, it teaches us something that we can pick up and use in our lives as well to make ourselves better people and better Muslims. So today we'll be doing exactly that. We'll look at three lessons that Karbala teaches us and we'll do that through two personalities from the caravan of Imam Hussein. First up, we'll look at John bin Huay. We'll, um, we'll have a look at who he was and what lessons we can learn from his story. And then we look at Hazrat Qasim and what lesson we can learn from him. All right, so let's get started. But first up, we'll have a quick recap from yesterday's session. All right, so our 
first question from yesterday, uh, yesterday's session is, who gave the azan for Fajr prayers on the day of Ashura? It was Hazrat Ali Akbar. Right. Next question. What did Sayyida Sakina give to her uncle Abbas on the day of Ashura? What did she give to him? What did she what did she want her uncle to do? She gave him a mushk, also called a water bag. Right? She wanted him to get water. Alright, last question. What does Kamar Bani Hashim mean? It means the moon of the family of Hashim. And whose title was it? It was the title of Hazrat Abbas. Right? Alright, so let's get into today's topic. We'll start off by looking at John Bin Hawaii. But maybe you've heard about him before, or maybe this is this is the first time, right? So we'll start off by looking at who he was and um, where um, what his role was in in Karbala. So John, he was one of the most sincere followers of the Ahlul Bayt. Right. So John was from Ethiopia, which is a country in Africa. And he was a Christian before, right? And he was also a slave. That means that he used to work for, for someone and he used to work for the, uh, one of the companions of the Holy Prophet called Abu Dhar Ghaffari. And, but eventually John was freed, which means that he was, he was no longer a slave. And then eventually he, uh, Abu Dhar Ghaffari, he, um, sent John to the household of Imam Ali and Sayyida Fatima, right? So John became a companion of Imam Ali. And when he was with Imam Ali, he, he learned a lot of things. In, uh, John, he, you know, he learned the Holy Quran by heart. So he was a hafiz -e quran Then he also learned the tafsir of the Quran and as well as um, the teachings of the Holy Prophet, right? So John, he was a very knowledgeable man. And um, he, there's a lot of um, things that he learned with Imam Ali. So, but when Imam Ali was martyred, uh, John then went to stay with Imam Hassan. And then after the death of Imam Hassan, um, John stayed with, with Imam Hussein. And he was with Imam Hussein all the way to Karbala. So John, he was he was a very lucky man. He was blessed to be the companion of three Imams, right? He was the companion of Imam Ali, and then Imam Hassan, and then Imam Hussein. Right. So when John left, um, sorry, when Imam Hussein left Medina, uh, you know, when he was leaving Medina to go to Karbala, John insisted. Uh, that he joins Imam Hussein, right? Even though at that time, John had become very old, right? He was around 80 years in Karbala, right? So he was a very old man. But in Karbala, John was always seen to be on the side of Imam Hussein. He was always with Imam Hussein, right? So what happened was, so that, so John was a very um, knowledgeable man, right? And he was, he was very knowledgeable. He had beautiful manners. So people respected him a lot for that. So on the night of Ashura, if you remember, we talked about this previously. On the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein, he gave all of his followers a choice to leave, right? And in that Imam Hussein, he insisted to John that John should, you know, he should leave. And he said to John that, you know, you've been with us for a very long time. You've been with us throughout and you've supported us all the time. But you should really go away and keep yourself safe. When Imam Hussein, he said this to, to John, John uh, replies back to Imam Hussein saying that, 
how is it fair that when you know everything was easy and everything was good i was you know benefiting from your company i learned so much from you i benefited from your hospitality um, but now when things are so difficult it's such a difficult time for you i should leave you alone john said that wasn't fair you know uh, it's i'm not going to leave you uh, alone in this difficult time so john stayed he proved to be a very true and loyal friend to imam hussein right he was a very he was he was a true companion and that can be quite difficult it can be quite difficult to be a loyal friend because it's easy to remain friends with someone when everything is is good right when there's nothing wrong happening or when there when there's nothing hard it's easy to be friends with someone you know just just to give you an example um you know just say that you know you're you're friends with someone who is who is quite popular at school everybody knows uh this person everybody likes this person and uh, you know you're good friends with them and then something happens at school and this friend of yours becomes quite unpopular uh, you know nobody wants to be friends with this person anymore uh, nobody likes this person and often it can happen that you think oh you know i don't want to be friends with this person either you know nobody likes uh, them and um, you know i would rather be friends with someone else that's not loyal friendship Right? that's not that's not being loyal or even even for example if you have a friend and that friend needs um help in some kind of school work or assignment or or anything and uh, that friend comes to you for help and you just make excuses um so that you don't have to help them out again that's not being a loyal friend right because you're not being there for that friend when they need you right in that um a loyal friend is someone who is there for you all the time right that's what john showed us in karbala that to be a loyal and trusted friend you be with uh with them be with your friends regardless of whether the situation is is good or bad right you should be someone that your friends can trust and your friends can depend on right so that's what um we learn from from john and if we look at his story even further we we can find a very very important lesson on equality and racism right so john was um someone who had a who had a dark complexion right so that means that he had a he had dark skin so on the day of ashura when john came to imam hussein to ask him for permission to go on to the battlefield and fight imam hussein did not want to give him permission imam hussein denied him permission you know how could imam hussein see someone as old as john be martyred right so imam hussein did not give john permission but john really wanted to go and fight he wanted to go and fight for the sake of allah so john asks imam hussein a question he says master i know why you are not letting me go to the battlefield is it because i am a black slave and you do not want the blood of a black slave to mix with the blood of the holy family when john said this imam hussein was deeply shocked right imam hussein said john do not say that you know we do not keep such differences and after that imam hussein he allowed john to go fight and you know john uh, went and um, was martyred on the battlefield so here we see imam hussein stand for equality against racism just because john was dark skinned or that he used to be a slave or that he was from another country never meant that imam hussein treated him any differently imam hussein always respected and treated john the same way as he did to others you know he he was a very very close and trusted companion of imam hussein in fact when john was killed 
Imam Hussein went to him and took him in his lap just like he did with his other family members. Right. So Imam Hussein, he shows us that there is no difference um, among John and anybody else. So what does this teach us? It teaches us that we should never be racist or we should never make fun of someone just because they have a different skin color or they belong to a different country or anything like that. Right? We are all creations of Allah and we are all unique and special in our own way. So this is what we learn from the story of John. So there are two lessons we've looked at so far. We learned about loyalty, how to be a loyal friend and also about equality against uh, racism. So we'll move on and now we'll look at Hazrat Qasim and what Hazrat Qasim teaches us. Hazrat Qasim, he teaches us a very important lesson on death. Right? So let's first look at um, who he was. Right? Hazrat Qasim, he was the son of Imam Hassan and Umm Farwa. So Imam Hassan is the brother of Imam Hussein. Right? And Hazrat Qasim, he was only 13 years old in Karbala. Hazrat Qasim, he lost his, his father when he was very, very young. So Imam Hussein, he uh, looked after him after the death of Imam Hassan. Right? So Hazrat Qasim was very special and close to Imam Hussein. So on the day of Ashura, Hazrat Qasim, he really showed us what he thought about death. Right, so this this is this is a young boy that we're talking about. Hazrat Qasim was so young that even when he went to fight, and uh, he he couldn't fit into the armor, right? The gear that you uh, wear when you go to fight in a war, he wouldn't fit into that because he was so young. You know, thirteen year olds they're not meant to fight in a in a battle. But on the day of Ashura, when uh, Hazrat Qasim, he wanted to get Imam Hussein's permission to go fight in the battlefield. Imam Hussein did not want to give him permission. Right? This was Hazrat Qasim. This was the son of his own brother. Right? He, you know, he would, he would say to Hazrat Qasim that you are the only son of your mother. You are my brother's orphaned son. How can I let you go? Right? And but Hazrat Qasim, he really wanted to go. He was, he was so brave and he was uh, determined to go fight and he really wanted to go um, get Imam Hussein's permission and go and fight in the battlefield. So at that time, Imam Hussein, he asked Hazrat Qasim a question. He asked him, uh, what do you, you know, how do you see death? He asked the Hazrat Qasim, what do you think about death? And to that, Hazrat Qasim, he replied, O oh, uncle, death to me is sweeter than honey. This shows us that Hazrat Qasim, he wasn't scared of death at all. Right? Because usually people are scared of death, right? And especially when you're that young. But what we should think about death is that it is simply a way to reach the hereafter. Right. We're working so hard in this world to do good deeds and to do things that please Allah. So why are we doing that? We are doing that so that we can have a good hereafter. So then why are people usually scared of the death? Why wasn't Hazrat Qasim scared of death? Because Hazrat Qasim, he knew that he was on the right path and dying in the way of Allah is a great honor. He knew that. Right? And people are usually scared of death because they think that death can be painful or that, you know, after that we'll be punished for our sins. And so that's what we need to work on, right? We need to make sure that we are convinced that we are on the right path and that we are doing good deeds um, 
and so that we don't and so you know so that we don't need to fear death anymore right and that is something we should pray to Allah at all times that you know oh Allah please grant us a good and easy death and one way we can try to achieve that is by asking for forgiveness for our sins right you can ask Allah for forgiveness at at any time at any time during the day at any time at night and um, you know if we when uh, you, you're making sure that when you know when death comes to you there are no sins that are left unforgiven right so if you for example you know from today you can make a habit that every night before i go to bed i'm going to ask forgiveness from allah for my for my sins because if you do that then you know that can be one step towards making sure that you know your death will be a very pleasant experience because death is written for everyone it's going to happen right so this is one thing that we can do to try and achieve a good death and try to make ourselves as brave as Hazrat Qasim so that we won't be fearing death and um, we will look forward to you know going into the hereafter so that is our topic for today and um, we looked at three very important lessons that we can learn from Karbala right so we first looked at loyalty and being true to our friends then we looked at um, equality and standing up against racism and lastly we looked at getting a better understanding about death through Hazrat Qasim Right, so let's move on to the activity for today. All right, so this one is a little different. So we have two columns, as you can see. One is on John and one is on Hazrat Qasim. So I'll be giving you um, sentences and you have to decide who that sentence belongs to. Right? Does it belong to John or does it belong to Hazrat Qasim? Who that sentence is about right so let's let's we can do the first one as an example all right so the sentence is he was from africa who do you think that um, is about is that about john or is that about hazard qasim who was from africa John was from Africa, right? All right, next one. He is the son of Imam Hassan. Who is the son of Imam Hassan? John or Qasim? This has been Qasim. He was very young in Karbala. This. Qasim, right? He was very young in Karbala. Next one. He showed us how to be loyal to our friends. We, so we looked at the lesson of loyalty and especially being loyal to our friends. Who, who taught us that? We learned that from the story of John. He was from the family of the Ahlul Bayt. Who was from the family of the Ahlul Bayt? As I asked him, right? He was from the family of the Ahlul Bayt. He was the son of Imam Hassan. He was a freed slave. This is. John, right? He was blessed to be with three Imams. Who did we talk about? We uh, that we said that he was, you know, he was a companion of Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein. It was John. And the last one, he said, death. To me is sweeter than honey. Who do 
we learn about that from? Hazrat Qasim. Right, so that's it. Um, that's it for our lesson for today. And um, inshallah, we'll see you back again tomorrow. Khudafis. Hey, hey, Ali, yes, Hey, hey, Ali, yes, Ma ke dulare, Ali, yes, Aankhun ke tare, Ali, yes, Aag lagi hai khaymo mein Hai aag lagi hai khaymo mein Ay mere piyare Ali Asghar Maa kehti thi jalte huye Jhule se lipat kar Hai hai Ali Asghar Hai hai Ali Asghar Maa kehti thi jalte huye Jule se lipat kar Hai hai Ali Asghar Hai hai Ali Asghar Zalim ne tujhe khabar se Is tarah nikala Sine pe laga jis ghadi Beta tere ne za को तेरे देख के बोला सरे अकबर हाय हाय अली असवर माँ कहती थी जलते हुए झूले से लिपट कर हाय हाय अली असवर हाय हाय अली मिल जाए तो खुद पूछ लो उससे क्या जुर्म था छे माह के पाचे का बता दे उसने तो बुलाया नहीं माँ भी मुझे कह कर हाय हाय अली असवर कहती थी जलते हुए झूले से लिपट कर हाय हाय अली असवर हाय हाय अली असवर अब तक मेरी आँखों से वो मंजर नहीं जाता गर्दन से तेरी खून टपक
चार कदम बाद ही गिर जाती हूँ बेटा मेरी भी कमर कम है तेरी लाश उठा कर हाय हाय अली असगर माँ कहती थी जलते हुए झूले से लेपट कर हाय हाय अली असगर माँ के दुलारे अली असगर आंखों के तारे अली असगर आग लगी है खैमों में हाय आग लगी है खैमों में है मेरे प्यारे अली असगर या हुसैन या हुसैन या हुसैन